Hi guys, it's Dr. Sosnowski. I just wanted to share with you uh, some of the testing that we're going to go over at your function at your initial lab evaluation. Uh, one of the things we're going to talk about is your salivary hormone report. Now, uh, you did your salivary hormone by giving four samples over the course of the day, and uh, this is what your result actually looks like. Um, so there is a optimal range as well as a reference interval. And uh, the green here is where you want your cortisol level if you are ideal. Um, the yellow below is too low, the yellow above is too high, and the red is very high, totally out of range. Um, the blue is way too low. Um, and uh, if you're way too low, it generally means that your adrenals general are very much not performing and we need to do something to get them working better and figure out why they are not working. Uh, generally, I see three things that cause the, uh, cause the adrenals not to work. Um, I see uh, chronic mold toxicity, chronic Lyme disease, and uh, sleep apnea. Uh, and uh, these are the three basics. The daily stresses of life, even if they're big ones, tend to not be as big of an issue unless you've got something else going on um, in terms of chronic infection or sleep apnea. So the morning cortisol um, is supposed to be really high because that's our get up and go hormone. And it go, the cortisol is supposed to go lower over the course of the day until it's nice and low at nighttime so that you can go to sleep. Now, in this um, example, the client here has a morning cortisol that's about 10. So it's less than half of what it could be. Um, the uh, midday cortisol noontime is 2.6, which is about half of uh, the low end of normal. Um, and then the evening cortisol is quite no, low at 0 0.99. Um, and then the nighttime cortisol actually goes up. Uh, so there's a couple ways that I look at this. First of all, when I look at a morning cortisol that's got a little burst, not much one, oftentimes I'm thinking about sleep apnea um, because the morning cortisol might be high, not because the adrenals are working really well, but it might be because you've got bad sleep apnea overnight. You've stressed out the adrenals enough that you don't have any adrenal function left for the day, but that first morning cortisol is still the residual of the nighttime stress effect. Um, so particularly if there, for say, for instance, there was a cortisol at 20 in the morning and then it went dropped down to 2.6 and then 0.99 like these two are, I'd be thinking definitely there's some sleep apnea. Um, in this case, I'd be wondering about it, number one, because the uh, morning one um, still had a bit of a burst. It's not flatlined all day long, but uh, also because the evening one suddenly goes up. Now, uh, by definition, the adrenal should be lower over the course of the day, so they should be low. So something happens between the evening and bedtime. Um, did the person fall asleep on the sofa um, before they went to bed? So they were actually having some apnea um, before they actually went to bed? It's a possibility. Um, and so one of the questions that I particularly typically ask. So in this case, um, this patient has an adrenal fatigue stage two. They still have the uh, ability to make some cortisol over the course of the day, but it's way lower than they really need. So we'll typically start something like adaptocrine, which is a mix of five different adaptogenic herbs, some that speed you up, um, some that slow you down a little bit. Now, adaptogenic herbs are herbs that help you adapt to the environment. So if you're trying to get up early in the morning and you need that get up and go, they'll give you a little extra. And if you're trying to go to bed at night, they'll start calming things down so that you can actually fall asleep at night. So adaptocrine is a mix of five different adaptogenic herbs. It seems to work really well. And typically I um, prescribe one capsule twice a day. Um, if your adrenal function is very low, uh, and I know you're gonna benefit some, from some extra cortisol, I'll give you something called SR Adrenal uh, as well, um, which does have some adaptogenic herbs in it, but is also what we call a glandular. Now a glandular, um, it, most of the glandulars for the adrenals are actually utilizing um, a adrenal gland ground up from a cow. Now guaranteed not to have mad cow disease for anybody that's wondering, um, but when you ground up, grind up an adrenal gland, you're going to get two things. You're going to get all the vitamins and minerals that that adrenal gland stores to function at its very best. So all the vitamins and minerals that yours needs to function at its very best as well, as well as cortisol. So we're, we're giving you a natural cortisol to boost your cortisol in the morning. So I typically suggest um, in somebody like this that we do a little bit of cortisol in the morning, somewhere between one and three tablets, one to three tablets again at noon, one to three tablets at dinner time. 
Now, it's not just because those are where the numbers are low, because quite honestly, if your morning cortisol is 10, but that's left over from uh, sleep apnea the night before, if you check it an hour later, it might be way down at five or four. Um, so it may be very low very quickly. Um, but I use those time because generally I find that uh, the uh, adrenal, SR adrenal lasts about four or five hours in the system. So you need to replace it, um, the cortisol every four or five hours and everybody's a little bit different so they can um, watch when they're seeing a dip. I suggest starting with one capsule um, at least three times a day, sometimes four if your nighttime one is too low. Um, but uh, after you start with one a day for a few days, if you don't see any effect, you go up. And I typically like the first thing in the morning one to be uh, a higher dose than the rest of the day because you need a higher dose then. I, if you're taking the SR adrenal first thing in the morning, I'd like you to take it literally first thing in the morning when you roll out of bed uh, on an empty stomach if you need to. Um, because the sooner we get that to your first morning rise in cortisol, which typically will happen at about 4 a.m. if your body is doing what it's supposed to, uh, which doesn't happen very much in my practice, but typically the normal cortisol rise will be about 4 a.m. So the closer we get to taking it first thing in the morning when we roll up out of bed, um, we're going to get a better day and uh, have better effect from that cortisol. Now, um, the nighttime one, cortisol is a little bit high. So when I see that, the first thing I'll ask is, how are you sleeping? If somebody's sleeping okay, it's fine. If somebody's not sleeping okay, I'll maybe suggest something to lower the cortisol at nighttime because the higher the cortisol is at night, the more interrupted the sleep. And the adrenals are also closely related to blood, blood sugar uh, and blood sugar control. So I know when the adrenals really aren't working very well, there may be some issues with low blood sugar periods during the course of the day as well. So let's look at the sex hormones as well. Now we know that if the adrenals aren't working very well, the sex hormones aren't working very well as, as well. Um, because as I've told you earlier, you know, when you are chasing that, uh, when you're being chased by that tiger and your body is being worried about keeping you alive till tomorrow, it's not really interested in paying attention to the sex hormones that are gonna keep you alive till next month. Um, so it really focuses all of everything on cortisol and doesn't make sex hormones. So what we see when the adrenals are really low is that the estradiol is very, on the, very much on the low side. The uh, progesterone will be very much on the low side, sometimes below normal or sometimes just low normal. Um, the testosterone will be on the low side of normal. Um, the DHEA, your anti-aging hormone, will typically be below normal. And then the progesterone estrogen ratio is typically way overloaded on the side of estrogen, meaning that instead of being in the 200 to 300 range, it's in the, in the uh, 50 or below range. Um, this is uh, typical. The body's fat cells still make estrogen. So even in the worst situation, we typically see more estrogen um, and less progesterone overall. So in this case, when I see these kind of hormones, and this obviously is a female, um, not a male. Um, when I see these kind of hormone ratios, I know that we need to get progesterone up to balance out the estrogen. We also need to get estrogen up to get the brain working a little bit better and testosterone to help feel good um, as well as to help create more muscle mass. So I would typically suggest doing um, either some DHEA to up the DHEA levels, but also to up the testosterone and estradiol levels because DHEA gets broken down in the body to both testosterone and estrogen. Um, so we can increase both of these naturally. Um, the other option is doing a, a troche, a, hormone, a lozenge of hormones, um, which has the estrogen, the progesterone, and the testosterone all in it to elevate these uh, numbers um, more exactly uh, and control exactly what's coming in. Um, if we're doing a hormone lozenge, um, then this is something that can be long-term or we do it for six months or a year or so until um, we can get the adrenals working a little bit better and uh, resolve the cause of why the adrenals are doing poorly. And then hopefully we won't need it anymore as the hormone levels come up on its own naturally. Um, so if we are trying to address the adrenals, how do we fix the adrenals? Number one, we fix the underlying causes, but we also want to do things in our own life that prevent the adrenals from being stressed out. So number one is making sure we're getting at least eight hours of sleep a night, um, ideally uninterrupted street sleep. Uh, number two, we want to avoid caffeine. Caffeine, I like to call beating a dead horse. If the adrenals are barely functional and their cup is mostly empty, 
every time you give caffeine, you force the adrenals to put out a lot of cortisol. Um, so you're making that cup even more empty. The next time you ask it to give you some more cortisol, there may not be any left. So definitely caffeine is something we want to stay way away from if we're trying to fix the adrenals. And I'm sorry, it doesn't feel great for the first week, but after you um, get over the first week without coffee, generally um, you start feeling a lot better after that. Number three, you also want, avoid, want to avoid anything that really taxes the adrenals. Um, you don't want to be doing really intense exercise because that actually uh, drives the adrenal function down further because you need a lot of cortisol to do that exercise. You also want to avoid hypoglycemia. Hypoglycemia is a huge um, physical stress on the body and causes the adrenals to start producing more cortisol and then lowering that cup even further. Um, so some very basic things, getting, um, getting a good eight hours of sleep, not drinking caffeine, trying to avoid hypoglycemia. Um, that may mean like having a little snack of protein before you go to bed. That may mean not skipping meals or not going right into intermittent fasting when you start with us if you know your adrenals aren't working very well. Um, and uh, certainly um, doing really intense exercise may not be something that feels very good when your adrenals are pretty poor, uh, but some people manage to do it anyway, um, and that's maybe not the right thing to do. So hope this was really helpful, and uh, looking forward to talking to you about uh, what your adrenals are showing.